everybody, welcome back to Alleyways, or if it's your first time here, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't already, join the Alleyways family, subscribe to my channel, uh, give this video a big thumbs up, and turn on post notifications so you know when I have new content. We're going to New York <laughs> right now. Let's go. I will be able to film, but um, if I can, I will. I'll take photos and I'll let you guys know how it is. We were waiting outside and we didn't have to. If you get here and there's a line outside, just come in. And if you want to Google this experience, this is the name of the tour that we're doing. So we just came inside and it feels really nice in here. Okay fam, so if you take the Catacombs by Candlelight Tour, which I strongly recommend, you're going to start right here on the corner of Mulberry Street and Jersey Street. When we got there, it was freezing cold and there was a line outside of this building, but we learned you can go right into this building when you arrive and wait inside, which was so much nicer. It was warm and there are plenty of places to sit. So this is where you're going to check in and the tour is going to begin and you get to the history right away. So the building you begin in was the original church office for Old St. Patrick's Cathedral. For a time after it served as the church office, it was actually converted into a church for the Russian Catholic Church in the 20th century, which I thought was really cool. The architect of this building was James Renwick. He's one of the most famous American architects of all time. And while you might not know him for designing this small building or even old St. Patrick's, you may know that he went on to design the second St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. After leaving the church office and checking in, you're going to walk around the block to this building. Our tour guide shared that this building until recently was a school. It began in 1860 and it served as a school until the late 2000s and because of low enrollment and lack of funds it was converted into condos which are now apparently very expensive but something I thought was really interesting was it was the first co-ed Catholic school in America. So next up on the tour, we went into the courtyard of the church. Here, our tour guide shared that the famous director Martin Scorsese grew up just a few blocks away from Old St. Patrick's, that he and his family attended church here, and that he's even shared in interviews that he learned to ride his bike in this courtyard in front of the church. He also shared that historical events that happened in this neighborhood and even at the church itself helped to inspire Scorsese films like Gangs of New York. We'll talk more about in just a bit. So in this photo beneath the plexiglass, I hope you can see it might be a little bit difficult, is an old set of stairs. Now this was the original entrance to the catacombs that went beneath the church. However, eventually a new entrance was created because, I thought this was really interesting, they would have to take the caskets down those stairs, which I can't even imagine how difficult that was, but the really tricky part was once they got down into the catacombs, they would have to execute an almost 90 degree turn, and they said that became more and more difficult, so they created the entrance that we used on the tour. From the courtyard, the tour went on to address the two cemeteries beside the church, and our guide explained that the difference between a graveyard and a cemetery is that a graveyard is attached to a church, while a cemetery is freestanding. So I was wondering why they kept referring to these as cemeteries, and our guide actually explained they're called cemeteries here at Old St. Patrick's because these were actually here before the church. The church was built in between them. I thought that was really cool. But one of the most interesting things I learned on the tour was that at one time, Pierre Toussaint was buried in the North Lawn. And if you aren't familiar with his story, make sure to research him after this video. He's truly so fascinating and inspiring beyond words. But just a bit that our tour guide shared about him. Pierre Toussaint was born a slave in Haiti, and he was brought to New York where he apprenticed to one of New York's leading hair dressers after spending time in Paris and he became just wildly successful as a hairdresser and his clientele belonged to the upper echelon of New York residents and even included women in Alexander Hamilton's family. 
As if that all wasn't amazing enough, he was an incredible philanthropist. So from his personal earnings as a hairdresser, he did so many incredible things. He built an orphanage, he built a school, he bought the freedom of other slaves, and even donated so much that his personal donations ended up accounting for more than half of the cost of building the old St. Patrick's. He attended mass every single day for 66 years, and when he passed away, he was buried here in the North Lawn. So later, he was actually exhumed and moved to be buried beneath St. Patrick's on 5th as a way to honor his life and his contribution to the church. This is a really big deal because he's the only layperson to ever be buried there, as it's an honor the church usually reserves only for bishops of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of New York. And he is actually currently in the process of being declared an official saint, which is really exciting. Now, another interesting tidbit that our guide mentioned was that in order to now be buried at Old St. Patrick's, one, you must be Catholic, and two, you are required to be cremated and put in an outdoor mausoleum. And I think that our tour guide said you actually can no longer have traditional burials anywhere in Manhattan, um, and that's the reason for the cremation mausoleum policy. But somebody correct me if I'm wrong there. Next, we went into the South Lawn where we learned more about the history of the neighborhood. And this neighborhood at its inception was known as the Irish Ghetto, like the one that inspired Gangs of New York. Pictured here is a priest that became known as Dagger John Hughes. What a nickname. So he was a priest that was largely responsible for the explosion of Catholicism in the U.S. And he was consecrated as bishop at Old St. Patrick's in the late 1830s. So in an effort to protect the church against anti-Catholic attacks, Hugh hastily had this exterior wall built. And that's why when you're there, you can see that the wall is uneven and it's almost kind of wavy. Hugh also had removable bricks put in the wall at certain points, and he did that so you could remove the brick and stick a rifle through the wall as an additional line of defense. He gained notoriety and even went to Parliament in London on behalf of Abraham Lincoln to ask London to remain neutral in the Civil War. Hughes uh, was the individual that led the effort to build St. Patrick's on 5th, and many of his parishioners were really upset about this because they felt the church was so far away from their neighborhood and so remote. But Hughes predicted that New York would continue to develop and expand, pushing into the area that St. Patrick's was being built at, eventually making it central. And that is what happened. New York did develop around St. Patrick's. Parishioners started moving into the city and eventually it did become central to the majority of parishioners. One last tidbit from outside the church that I thought was interesting was that the old St. Patrick sadly burnt down in a city fire and it was rebuilt with the new facade you see today. So it didn't actually always look like this. Next, we moved inside the church and from here on out, there was not as much information given. They gave you a moment just to explore the inside of the church and share just a few facts. It was gorgeous. Something I found really interesting was that the organ there has been here since the 1860s. It's been played more than 100,000 times and it's never had a major overhaul. Also, this church may look familiar to you because the final scene of The Godfather featuring the baptism was filmed right there on the altar. Now, also on the altar, you may notice there's something known as an umbrellino. You can see it here in this photo. And in medieval times, it was used as an umbrella above the Pope. No, they don't use them as an umbrella for the Pope, but they're given as a figurative gift from the Pope to a basilica. From here, to finish off the tour, we finally headed to the catacombs. Now they give you a cute little electric tea light that's battery powered. Of course, you can't have a real flame in there, but you get to go around and explore. Inside the catacombs, there are three main chambers and you're free to walk around them for about 15 minutes. One of the chambers is designated for priests and nuns of the church, and the other two are reserved for purchase by parishioners. They sounded like they were extremely expensive and you can't see inside any of them except for one. All of the tombs are hermetically sealed to avoid decomposition gases from the cathedral above, but one of the tombs is not yet closed and that is the Eckert family tomb seen here. Now, Thomas Eckert is also really interesting, so feel free to Google him after this video, but notably in his lifetime, he was the president of Western Union and he wanted to have this space 
for his family to all be together, and he truly spared no expense here. The Eckert family crypt is probably the most elaborately decorated of all the tombs underneath St. Patrick's Old Cathedral. That's what our guide shared, because you can't see inside any of the others. But he said the entire crypt cost 81000 to build, which in his day and age was obviously an incredible amount. He also pointed out that the green ceiling tiles are the same ones that are in Grand Central Terminal Building because they were being built around the same time. The light bulbs are original Thomas Edison bulbs. There was also a line put in for gas lighting as well as ventilation. Now that was so people could come and visit and have a pleasant experience. Sadly, the only people that are buried here uh, with Eckert are his second wife and her parents. None of his children were ever put here, they believe, because of a family dispute. Um, which I think is so sad, but you will notice there are some empty spaces in the crypt there that were reserved for his children. It was really breathtaking, and it was really interesting to have one open crypt to be able to look inside of, even though they did explain that it being that elaborate was atypical. And they also said he actually bought two tombs side by side, and blasted the wall in between them so this one was a lot more spacious than the others in the area and that's pretty much it for the tour after that they take you back out to the room there's a gift shop they give you coupons for some great local restaurants in the area and we had a really great time i would definitely recommend it to anybody who has an interest in history the history of the catholic church and the history of this neighborhood okay fam we just got to our hotel let's go inside and see what it's like I'm gonna go as slow as possible. For those of y'all that get motion sick, but you can come in, there's a little vestibule and immediately to your left, there's a really nice closet with plenty of space, hangers, storage, safe, slippers. Opposite me here, there's a full length mirror right there, which is nice right before you go out. And inside, look how beautiful this is. I love it. A really nice window seat and view of the city. We got a park view room. I'll show y'all more uh, tomorrow morning on the vlog of our view and everything, but there it is for now. And then we got a nice chair, TV, another mirror, a Monroe that didn't come with the room. And then the bathroom, there's a full-length mirror on the door here. And then you walk in and you've got a really nice big tub and sink area. And here is the mirror. Good lighting for makeup. That's something I always like to point out. There's a cosmetic mirror. And I've stayed at this hotel before and they've got really nice toiletries. Here's the brand. And also a good hair dryer. So save your space. You don't have to worry about your hair dryer. They have a really good one here. Robes. And then a shower. So that is the room tour. Okay. The catacombs tour was amazing. There was so much interesting history. The thing to me that was the most interesting was the history of the neighborhood, I think. Monroe, what did you like best on the tour? Um... Yeah, probably the history of the neighborhood was the most interesting. That is, like, the most of the time on the tour, you spend talking about the history of the neighborhood and the history of the church. Um, I will hopefully have shared a bunch of facts uh, and trivia, things that we learned that were really interesting. When you go down to the catacombs themselves, you're only there for about 10 minutes, and they give you a little candle that you get to take as a souvenir, and you're free to just walk around and essentially look at... Um, the markers on the outside of the family tomb. So each one holds 12 caskets. You buy them for your family. And there's three main halls and it's shaped like this. One hall, two hall, three hall, connected by three halls that go from the end through the middle and the front. The main hall is from the 19th century. The left is for nuns and priests. And then the right was from the 20th century. Um, Hopefully I'm not repeating myself, but I might be because I haven't edited the video yet, so I don't know. But really, really cool stuff. Uh, a good tour, an affordable price, and a really nice way to start off your trip here. 
They do give you a coupon for um, a place called Lombardi's Pizza, which is over there and has said to be the oldest pizzeria in America. So if you're going and you're trying to plan a whole first night, just know that they do give you that coupon. And I think it'd be really nice to pair together if you knew ahead of time. We did not know that. We have plans to go to Il Devo tonight. So our dinner reservation is at seven and it's around six now. So I have to go get ready because I look crazy. So I've got a special outfit from Pink Lily tonight. So let's go get ready in three, two, and one. I'll show you the outfit later. It's three minutes to get ready. So I'm rushing like crazy. But we are headed to dinner now. Um, like I said, we're going to the Il Devo. I'm like gonna freeze. My legs are gonna be so cold. There we go. Oh. <laughs> we got to dinner. We're the only people here. So I'm gonna show you how beautiful is this restaurant. Look at our plates. Let's take a look at the menu. And here, if you want to pause and screenshot, you can. Starting with the beef tartare. We also got some bread, it's delicious. We were starving because we didn't get lunch, so let's go give this a go. I'm giving the beef tartare two thumbs up. It was really good. What do you think, Andrew? Oh, it was good. It was really good. The bread was so good. You guys know I'm a sucker for bread. The kasha was amazing. Right, I got the botini, stuffed with burrata, and pomodoro sauce. We got truffle fries, asparagus, and Andrew got the ragu, and we are so Starving, so let's go. Literally, I'm almost embarrassed to show y'all how much we ate, but it was amazing. Here are the dessert options We're between the canolo, the chocolate sponge cake, and the creme brulee. Hard to pick, but our server's giving great recommendations, so let's just see. We got the cannoli. Oh, okay, fam, the cannoli was amazing. Everybody there was so sweet. The service is great. The food was incredible. I didn't have anything bad, so I would definitely go back in a heartbeat and re recommend it to all of you. After that, we came back here and I had to do just like a few things for work. I got a shower and now I am so tired. It is 10.56. It's only 9.56 at home, but I can barely keep my eyes open and we have a big day tomorrow that you guys aren't going to want to miss. Um, if you watch this, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the whole thing. I love you and I can't wait to see you next time right here on Alleyways. Bye!